Hello and welcome to this second film of eight about calculations in chemistry. Um, this is the second uh, film about empirical formulae. The first one just introduced some key terms really. This one practices a couple of examples and it will be really handy to have a data sheet um, by your side for this so that you can see where the numbers are coming from. Okay, hopefully by the end of this film you'll have seen how to calculate an empirical formula uh, starting from masses of elements that you're given and from percentages. Okay, so uh, here's our first example. Um, remember what we are trying to do in the first step is to find the number of moles, so we need to remember the formula for the number of moles. Hopefully we do. It's little m over big M, which is the mass in grams over the molar mass. Okay, so we're going to do this for these three elements and just to make it easier to make sure at the end that we've got the right numbers for the right element. I'm going to put a little table in, okay? Because what some people do is they get the right numbers but then muddle up the elements at the end. So the number of moles of calcium is going to be 13.5 divided by what's calcium's atomic mass? 40.08. Um, we're going to have 10.816 for oxygen. And we're going to have 0.675 over 1.08. So I've got all those numbers from my periodic table. Let's just find out what they are. 13.5 divided by 40.08 is 30.337. 10.8 over 16, that is 0.675. And 0.675 over 0.108, sorry, 1.008 is 0.670. Okay, all these numbers are to three significant figures. Okay, if you can always do three significant figures, that's a good thing to do. Turn these things into a ratio. Okay, now I could divide them all by 0.337. Okay, I could do that on my calculator, or I could just look at them and see that I've got a ratio that is approximately 1 to 2 to 2. Okay, so I've got to plug these things into a formula. So I'm going to have 1 calcium, 2 oxygens, 2 hydrogens. So CaO2H2. And in actual fact, the formula for that is CaOH twice, but there's no way of telling that from the numbers. So if you wrote this, it would be absolutely fine. Okay. Let's just go ahead and do another example. This one uses percentages, okay? Now you might be thinking, well, okay, I know a formula for mass, turning mass into moles, but I don't know one for percentages, okay? And here I'm given percentages of the elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, not calcium anymore, but carbon, okay? So how am I gonna do this? If I'm not told masses, I don't know what to put in here. If I just imagine I've got 100 grams, then these things become masses, right? So in other words, I'm doing exactly the same thing. 48.38 divided by 12.01. Yep, for carbon, uh, 8.12 divided by 1.008. Hydrogen, and 53.5 divided by 16. For oxygen, let's just quickly work those out. 48.38 12.01. This is... 4.03, 8.12 divided by 1.08, 8.06, and 53.5 divided by 16 equals 3.34. Hmm, okay. So now, what are we going to do? Um, sorry, got a bit distracted there. I'm going to divide them all by the smallest one. Okay. And that gives us 4.03 divided by 3.34 is 1.2. This one, 8.06 divided by 3.34 is 2.4. Okay, and this one is 1. Okay, now how are we going to get them into whole numbers? Well, dividing them all by the smallest one isn't going to help. So you do need a little bit of uh, arithmetical agility here, I suppose. 
Um, but if we multiply them all by 5, then we're going to get rid of these decimals. Okay, so if I multiply that by 5, I'm going to get 6. If I multiply this by 5, I'm going to get 12. If I multiply that by 5, I'm going to get 5. So plug them into the formula. Remember, if I'd done it as a table, it makes it much harder to mess up which one's which. So C6 H12 O5. Okay, so there's one using percentages, and you can see it's exactly the same problem as it was with masses. Okay, so there's nothing particularly complicated there, but it is something that probably needs a bit of practice. Okay, and once again, I've said it before, if you're about to do a test and these calculations seem hard when you're practicing them, then you're probably not ready for the test. So don't let that sort of situation arise. If you can see that they're a bit difficult, come and get some help so that they become easy enough for you to do in the test.